So let's start our fifth and final arithmetic review lessons. This one's going to be on the order of operations. Now, I, uh, I don't like PEMDAS. I mean, even though I'm a Texas Longhorn and I love telling the kids, hey, it's like, please excuse my dumb Aggie sister, I can't do that because I used to teach it that way and people used to always think that addition came before subtraction and uh, multiplication came before division, which led to all kinds of problems. So I like teaching it with gems. Grouping, exponents, multiplication and division, and addition and subtraction, okay, or subtraction and addition for the S. Um, now, these two concepts, uh, multiply and divide, are the same operation because division is defined as multiplying by the reciprocal. Same thing with addition and subtraction. Subtraction is defined as adding the opposite. So they don't have different orders of priority. They have the exact same uh, level of priority in the order of operations. So if I see the problem 8 divided by 2 times 6, I have to do the division first and then the multiplication. And when I used to teach it with PEMDAS, people would do the multiplication first and get the whole thing wrong. So don't do that. Whichever one comes first in terms of multiplying, divide, or addition, or subtraction, you do that first. So 8 divided by 2 is 4 times 6 is a happy 24. Okay? Now, um, I'm not going to go over any more basic problems. I'm going to deal with the kind of problems that we like to see as algebra teachers, the things that are a little more complex. So let's first talk about nesting grouping symbols. Okay, so I can nest grouping symbols inside of other grouping symbols, and what I have to remember is that I need to work from the inside out. So I need to find the innermost grouping symbol, which in this case is 5 plus 2, and I'm going to simplify it to a 7. Now I'm going to rewrite only the part of the problem that is also inside the grouping symbol. I'm not going to write the plus two times two and the plus one, um, only because I'm going to be a little lazy right now. So three times seven is 21 plus one, which is 22. So I've taken care of that part of the problem. Now I have the leftovers. Now remember, two grouping symbol. What operation goes in between there? Multiplication and then I'm going to add the one at the very end. So multiplication is more important. Two times 22 is 44, plus one, 45. Box it off, happy face. Now, um, this problem is, is not too bad. You just have to find where to start and then work your way out. So work from, from the inside out. Now I'm gonna tell you right now how I make problems that look scary, okay? I take a simple problem like this and I'm, I might slap some more parentheses around it and put some more stuff on the outside. Or I can make this thing the numerator of a bigger problem and then put something else in the denominator. I like to do that because it forces you to think about what to do first, second, third, and fourth. And it also forces you to do what I call chunking. You break the problem up into little chunks and you deal with each of the chunks. Case in point, I'm going to take one very simple order of operations problem. 8 minus 4 quantity squared plus 4 and I'm going to make it the numerator of a bigger problem and I'm going to put in the denominator another order of operations problem that's very simple and what this does is it creates a problem that looks horrible you're like oh no that's horrible but if you chunk it in your brain and think oh my gosh that order of operations problem is really not that bad that numerator is like a baby problem the denominator is like a baby problem and she just squished two of them together so how do you simplify that well you realize that all I did was I put together two small problems and then you simplify each of them separately so I'm going to put a little n for numerator and I'm going to do all of the work for the numerator over here okay so 8 minus 4 is 4 squared plus 4 16 uh, plus 4 gives me 20. Okay, so I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to put the 20 in the numerator. Now I'm going to deal with the denominator. 2 times the quantity of 18 minus 16 plus 2 times 3. Okay, so 18 minus 16 is 2. So I have 2 times 2 plus 2 times 3. Since these are both multiplications, I can do them at the same time. 4 plus 6 which gives me 10. I go back and I put this up here. Now I'm not going to box it off happy face, that answer, because it might not be right because I have to simplify. Now since they both end in zero, that means they're both multiples of 10, and that just simply becomes two. Now don't forget to do that. Don't forget to always check what you have left over to make sure it's simplified, because you don't want to leave like a three over a three or a 20 over a 10 when the instruction says to simplify completely, because these are not simplified, because the numerator and denominator are not relatively prime. So don't get caught up in the fact that you had to do all of this work and totally forget that you have to simplify the final answer. Now I'm going to do one more problem that looks kind of gross, um, and it's going to involve a square root. Okay, 
because a square root uh, is really an exponent. And so if I just had a square root by itself, I have to treat it like an exponent. But since I have this vinculum that groups the entire quantity 4 squared times the quantity 5 squared minus 4 squared, I have to treat this like a giant grouping symbol and take care of this first. So I'm going to ignore that plus 3. That plus 3 is like at, at the end. I'm going to tack that on at the end. So I'm going to worry about this. Okay, and if I look at this, I have the square root of 4 squared. I deal with the exponents here. I can say 16, 25 minus 16, right? I just squared everything. And then I'm going to say 25 minus 16 is 9. And then I have um, 16 times 9 is 144. Now I have to know what the square root of 144 is, and that's 12. And I add a 3. Just tack that 3 on at the end. I'm not going to worry about writing that down because I don't need it till right now. And so now I'm going to put it back. Don't forget it, though. If you do this like me, every once in a while when you get like nervous during a quiz, you'll totally do all of this work perfectly and then forget to add that 3 back on. So take a second and say, oh, did I actually finish the problem? And, oh, no, I haven't. So I have to add 3 plus 12, and I get 15. Box it off. Happy face.